Hi, my name is Andrea Ferroni and uh, in this video I want to show you the differences uh, between a cylindrical pipe and a conical pipe ma uh, for making a, a digerito. And uh, this is a very good point for starting making digeridos and even to choose a digeridu for playing because uh, they have uh, very different characteristics. And as we probably know, um, if we go back to the origin, uh, you should recognize two kinds of style of traditional playing with these two kinds of shapes, for example. And uh, if you are more practiced with uh, uh, European music or um, Western music anyway, you should know that for a wind instrument we have two kinds of shapes cylindrical pipe and conical pipe it depends if you have a, a flute, trumpet, saxophone and so on and this happens for several reasons and we also have to consider that for this case I want to show you we are talking about uh, semi-open uh, pipes so this part where we have uh, the lips uh, has to be considered as closed uh, in the same way for conical digits but in, in, for example for flutes uh, flutes have to be considered open in this side and open in this other side so they work in a different way but for saxophone, trumpet and oboe and other instruments like that uh, the place where we have uh, the reed or the leaves has to be considered closed. So, in these graphics, uh, I try to highlight some important point that I really roughly, really rarely find somewhere around on the net. If I find them, they are not completely. They are not com complete at all. So. Um, I want to show you, starting from a conical pipe, for example, uh, we, have, we recognize that if we have the basic drone at 100 of hertz, uh, we have the resonances, that they are designed in, in, in green, every 100 of hertz. So, we have just been multiplying the fundamental for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is why I used 100 Hz just to recognize that it is very simple to uh, make a calculation of the resonances. So, for this kind of shape, if we have a perfect cone that we never have because in the, in the real, uh, a real didgeridoo is a truncated cone, is not exactly a cone. But if we have a, a precise cone, we have the fundamental and the, all the other resonances. So, if we want to uh, play a didgeridoo like this, and if the first resonance, so the fundamental, is 100 of hertz, we have to put our lips here and to blow out like this uh, with the same frequency. When we do so, um, means that we are uh, blowing inside this pipe a sound spectrum that I highlighted here in yellow, that is the sound spectrum of our lips. So, for a shape like this, every uh, Harmonic. So in this case we have the basic drone, the, the yellow one I mean, we have the basic mm, uh, drone, or we have the, the, the fundamental of the, of the leaves, then the harmonics of the leaves, so the third, uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth harmonics and so on, they are able to, to meet the resonances. And so if I put this sound spectrum, the yellow one, in a pipe that uh, is able to amplify in every resonance 
uh, I can obtain the red sound spectrum, that is the sound spectrum of the didgeridoo. In this case, everything is synchronized. So the, the, the harmonics are always with this uh, multiplication factor, uh, they, they go ahead with this multiplication factor. So I hear the uh, excitation, that is the yellow one, per uh, the, um, the, the, the impedance, and then I obtain the sound spectrum. In case I use this kind of shape, you should be able to recognize that the resonances are not all the multiple of the fundamental, but only the odd multiples. And so we have 100, 300, 500, 700. And what happens is, if they join, so if my lips spectrum meet the resonance, I obtain a peak of volume. So I obtain the fundamental. Uh, it, for this kind of shape, the, the, second, the first harmonic is very, very low because uh, it, it is in an um, uh, anti-resonance uh, position. And then, we, again, we, when I meet the harmonic of the lip with the, the first uh, um, resonance, uh, the, the second resonance of the, the, the cylindrical pipe, I obtain, again, an, an agar peak of volume. So this is very important, and for these two kinds of shapes it is very simple because you meet the resonance or you don't meet at all. If we have a um, mixed shape with parts of cone and, part of, uh, and, and other parts they are cylindrical, so we have a shape for example like this, I risk to obtain resonances, they are in odd position. So, in another, in another video we will um, talk about this point. But, if we remain in this area, so with two specific uh, shapes, uh, we uh, should be able to recognize some very important characteristic. The resonance, I like the fundamental and uh, the other resonances that we call them on the didgeridoo tooth. So, if I have a, cylindri uh, mm, a cylindrical pipe, uh, I have, if I want to move from the fundamental to the tooth, I have to move from 100 to 300 hertz. So, this means a quite big step. Uh, with a conical pipe, if I have the fundamental at 100 hertz, I have the first root at 200, so I move from 100 to, to, from 100 to 200. And this is easier to, to move as a step, so it is smaller. So the second root is the first root of a cylindrical pipe. So this is the first point. I will use this shape if I want to move from the basic drone to the tooth easily. And for those they know something about traditional music in northeast uh, Arnhem land style we have pretty this kind of shape and the tooth is used very often in every in every song and if we move uh, to the west Arnhem land style where they use mostly this kind of shape uh, they don't use uh, the tooth pretty at all Another point is, we have frequencies here and we have dB, so the volume in, in the vertical uh, line. And uh, this means that if I multiply the vertical for the, the horizontal uh, axis, I obtain the area of the red part and so on. The same if I do it here and 
we should be able to recognize then that this kind of shape, given that it has more peaks of volume due to uh, the, uh, its own sun spectrum, that this area is bigger than this other area because I have more peaks on every multiple and here I have less peaks because I have uh, the, the peaks every uh, two multiples okay only on the odd multiples so in this case I have more volume here and less volume here um, I try to, to show you these two main points if I tune the visual bond in F that is pretty cylindrical except for uh, the small bell here that works but not so much for changing the peaks so I can use it and this one is not properly um, a cone it is a, a truncated cone with a complex shape but it is mostly conical um, I, I can show you that if I move from the basic drum to the tooth it is uh, an octave Okay, so the distance between um, the basic drone and the toots with this kind of instrument is higher and this is shorter. Even the volume, I don't know if uh, it's good with this camera because uh, yeah, the, the, the camera is also able um, to limit the volume and to try to stabilize the volume in the entire video so probably you are not able to recognize, recognize it but with the same pressure I have more volume with this one than in this one okay so um, for this reason people think that this shape is the best and this shape is not so good because it has less volume and you are not so... Uh, uh, you don't feel so comfortable moving from the basic drone to the tooth but there is another point that is even more important um, if I... if I play the overton line like with the position of my mouth or like this I can create uh, another peak of frequency uh, between 1000 Hz to 3000 Hz so about here and we have to consider that if we want to listen very well this overton all the other overtones or harmonics um, has to be they have to be very very soft so I prefer to have a sun spectrum that is very very limited with peak very very low with maybe less peaks uh, in this case I can hear very well this harmonic so if I it's the same if I do it with sing, overton singing I can do it like this in this case I use most of the um, harmonics of my voice so you could recognize my voice but if I close my muscle and I try to filter them and I, it's something like it is if I move down these overtones and so in the, in the second try I did um, I had less uh, overtones of my voice uh, but I just amplified one overtone of my vo voice one by one so 
If you want to listen more, this sound with our didgeridoo, this shape is better and this shape is not. There is another very important point and we know we don't use this shape. We use shapes they are close to cylindrical or close to conical pipe. If I, I try to find another, another mm, color, maybe this one, if I use a shape like this, for example, that lots of people love, so if I enlarge this bell, I also have to enlarge these bells. So, um, the slope uh, before and, uh, and then the, the frequency uh, enlarge its own shape, like this. The same can be for this kind of ditch. If I have a cylindrical pipe with a very big bell, I have to consider that the, sound, the final sound spectrum will be like this. This means that the area increase and so even if I have a cylindrical pipe but with a very big bell I wish to have the bell of the sound spectrum so large that uh, the, the, the final uh, volume of my ditch is bigger and so you can't hear the overtone here. I show you. And I can give another one, maybe with a very big bell. So this ditch is a very cheap ditch uh, from Indonesia. It is quite short and a very big bell. So it's something like this shape, but with a very, very huge bell. You can probably recognize just a bit of the overtones played with my mouth, but the sound is very, very soft and it is covered, completely covered and masked by the sound spectrum of my ditch. If I have the same shape but with a moderate bell, I can obtain this kind of sound. Sometimes people prefer to have a very big volume, but for my, in my opinion, it's better, especially if I play on stage with a PA system, I prefer to put up the volume instead of to have a big volume of my ditch with a very bad sound of the ditch. And I prefer to use conical shapes when I move from the basic drum to the tooth uh, in a very fast way. Of my lips get out outside the ditch 
uh, without any amplification of or any filter because that kind of mistakes they uh, I, I have to cancel here to be clear the digital has a sound spectrum like this okay so if I get exactly the frequency of uh, the resonance, I obtain a good sound. But all this, all the sound, they 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 follow in a frequency between the resonances, and, and so in a, an anti-resonance, they get out exactly how they are. And so, if they are mistakes, they sounds like mistakes. So, with this ditch, you have to be very precise. But the last point is, the bigger your sound spectrum is, the worse it is with bands uh, where you have um, a drum set, a bass and, and so on. Except if you don't use them in a very good way. So you can use them, uh, to use them in a very good way I mean sound silence, sound silence. Uh, it is quite rare you find the jury do player they play with a drum set and a bass player uh, with a conical shape and they also try to play overton lines because the sound that get out is just a basic drum so uh, i have in mind several players but i don't want to forget someone but for example white marmalade uh, they use conical digits uh, with a drum set but the, 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 the kind of style of sign, for example, is very staccato sound. So, then pay attention. Then you have two characteristics. More brilliant sound, less volume, more difficult to change from uh, basic drum to the tooth, but a good shape also to play with a band. In this case, to play with a band is even possible, but you have to be more careful. It is easier to move from the basic drum to the tooth. You have a sound spectrum that is bigger and so you have even more volume. In the next video I will show you what happens if we have a shape that is not exactly a cylinder or a cone. Thank you. If you like it, if you like this video, just thumb up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. And um, if you want to remain connected uh, write me a message, uh, I can uh, introduce you in my mailing list or just subscribe the channel to have more videos. If you have questions, please ask me. See you next time.